Ooh wee, where do we begin? Let's go. Alright Geeks, what's poppin'? So we're here with the newest Marvel Select action figures. I, I want to call it a wave, but I don't think Select does waves. But all three of these dropped within a week or two of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a wave. So we're here with the new Marvel Select 7 inch action figure wave. Anyway, we've got the Silver Centurion Iron Man. We've got the big old Titanium Man. And we've got Johnny Storm the Human Torch. Now I'm cheating a little bit. Uh, that is not going to be my Johnny Storm since he's a seven inch figure. I'm going to use him as the original Human Torch, the OG one from the Invaders with Captain America. I think it's John Hammond was his name if I'm not mistaken. Genius, billionaire, philanthropist, Tony Stark's confidence is only matched by his high flying abilities as the hero called Iron Man. Having created a wondrous suit of armor to keep himself alive, Tony has revised it dozens of times, each version with increased capabilities, fast operation, reduced energy usage, and adaptability to the greatest threats the universe has to offer. This Marvel Select action figure of Iron Man is based on his appearance in Marvel Comics. It includes interchangeable hands, effects pieces and heads, and features 16 points of articulations. I'm most excited about the pulse bolts. I love those things when I was a kid. I dug it. This was my favorite armor growing up. Fiery and hot-headed, the Human Torch burns up the sky with an unquenchable love of adventure and always has the backs of his family, the Fantastic Four. The Human Torch can ignite his body to cover it in fire that he manipulates to a high degree. This flame can be adjusted by temperature and density, as well as be used for precision work or to blank an entire area. With his fiery form, he can burn through just about any adversity and put a smile on it while he does. This Marvel Select action figure of the Human Torch is based on his appearance in Marvel Comics. It includes interchangeable hands, effects pieces, and heads, and features 16 points of articulation. That's not something we should brag about. Numerous villains have made up Iron Man's gallery of enemies, with many of them similarly armor-based in order to counter Iron Man's abilities. The Russians have created both the Crimson Dynamo and Titanium Man to try and stop the threat posed by Iron Man, and they have fought Stark throughout numerous iterations. And they have fought Stark through numerous iterations. This collector's edition action figure of the Titanium Man is based on his appearance in classic Marvel comics. It features 16 points of articulation and an interchangeable head and hand. All right, who are we gonna open up first? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch tiger by toe, blah, 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 blah. human torch. Normally I complain about the size of these Marvel Select figure boxes, but this time it's justified. He comes with a lot of stuff. He's got extra flame effects, hand effects, but he's got a base stand and a big swooping tail of fire. So, hey, plastic put to good to use this time. And there's the base stand. So here are all the accessories. You've got his base stand, you've got his flaming fire tail, you have his hand throwing flame balls at his fingertips, you've got a hand holding, throwing a flame ball. Now you have this second head. Now the difference between this head and the other one, this one doesn't really have facial features. And I'm wondering if they included this for people like me who want this to be their original Human Torch. Because that's the major difference between the two torches. When you look at how most artists draw them, Johnny Storm, you can still see his facial features pretty clearly. But the original Human Torch, most people when they draw him, it looks kind of like a blank face with fire over it. So I'm wondering if that's what this is. Anyway, this is the head I'm gonna be using because like I said, it's gonna be my OG torch. Then you've got these hands here. Just simple fists, but everything is translucent. And unlike the Marvel Legends translucents, these are like hard plastic as opposed to that rubbery. And I'm not saying one's better than the other, I'm just saying it's different. Think of this more like a hard candy, like a Jolly Rancher. And here's Iron Man. He is decked out. I mean, could you ask for more? So Iron Man, we've got a lot of accessories. You got these open hands here. You got these semi-closed 
I don't want to say gripping hands, but semi-closed, kind of scratch my back type hands. You've got the regular helmet here without the scope on it. You've got a classic 1979 Tony Stark head. <laughs> and you've got these hands with the built-in repulsor effects. Do they come out? Yeah, they come out. You got a flight stand. And my favorite, you've got these fists with the pulse bolts. Now these don't look like they come out. You can see that they're as a part of the sculpt of the hand, but man, this is gonna be my favorite. Whew. And then there's this beast. So he comes with two extra hands. They're the kind of the gotcha hands. And he's got his helmeted head. I forgot Iron Man comes with some boot jet fire effects installed. And there's the gang. So Titanium Man and Iron Man, that's not how they come out of the box. I swapped out one of his hands, this one for the open hand, and I swapped out his head because I wanted to go with the helmet first. And then with Iron Man, I swapped to the regular helmet because to me, the other helmet is an accessory. It's an extra head. He doesn't always go around with that scanning visor on. So we're going to go ahead and roll with this. All right, starting out with the big guy here. First things first, his foot hinges are very loose. When I'm standing up, well, I get, maybe it's just one. Funny enough, they don't feel loose right now when I'm doing them freehand in the air, but when I stand them up, the weight of the body easily moves. See how I just touched it and he kind of fell forward? So he's pretty weighty, so be careful with that. All right, so checking his armor out. High sheen and gloss, looks really good. I dig that on the face mask, they did his classic look from way back in the days. If you know the old uh, Iron Man cartoon from, I think it's the 60s, and you remember he was in there, that's exactly how it looked. So I love it. Now, good, sculpt, good sculpting up here. Armor even has built-in sausage abs. But I dig that he's really shiny. Looks like he's actually in armor. What is that? A paint scuff? Eh. Looks like a paint chip. And he's got his little plastic iron skirt there. And going straight down to the bottom. Good job on the paint. Shell head. Spot on. Classic. Now, with the Marvel Select figures, I was never a big fan. I'd pick up one here, one there that I thought looked good. They're really hit or miss. It seems like the Marvel Select figures are absolutely superb or they're way off and not worth buying. I think they're getting a lot better now because I find myself actually buying more. As you can see, I bought these three all within a couple of weeks of each other and they all arrived just about the same week. But I'm digging that they are adding more articulation to some of them. A lot of select figures, you don't get bicep swivels and you don't get thigh swivels. I was glad to see both of those there on Shellhead. So armor looks good. Candy apple red paint and this pearl white on the arms and legs. Looks good. Got his swim trunks on. And that hole in the back is probably for his flight stand. Get down to the bottom. Boots look good. Nice and shiny. Great paint job. I call him a translucent Joe. So again, his body, just like the effects that came with him, looks like hard candy. Kind of like a Jolly Rancher. And you can see through him. You can see his screws and the joints in there. But they don't look bad. It almost looks like you're looking at his bones under him. So they did a really good job with that. It's not like you're looking at it like, oh, I can see all his toy parts. And he's got some fire around his ankles. And his shoulders, his upper back. Didn't see that before. He looks pretty good. All right, so the big question with the Marvel Flex is always articulation. So let's see how this guy holds up. A little 360 on the head. Tilt left. Tilt right. Looking down. You get almost nothing looking up. Not sure why. There's nothing back here to really stop him looking up. It's just the head sculpt. Doesn't allow for it. Here he is straight ahead. Oh, actually I thought that was straight ahead, but that's up. So 
Maybe we'll try it like this. Uh, I guess you consider that straight ahead, even though it's tilted down a little bit. But yeah, you don't get anything there. You'd have to bring this torso back. That sucks. You don't have to worry about the flame effects coming off when you're putting his hands up because at the shoulder joint, that's as high as they go. You don't get them parallel with the shoulder, so it stops right where the flame effects are. And I'm sure that's by design. You're getting basically no range coming in towards the chest or going out to the back. And there it is, single jointed elbows. Perfect 90 degree range. Not so perfect articulation. No excuse for single jointed elbows. He, he can't get anywhere near his face unless he bend his hand that way. That's as far as she goes. You do get a full 360. Repulsor blast. Hold my hand. Kiss the flaming ring. Lean with it. Rock with it. Abdominal rocker is tight and smooth. You get the round and round. All right, so you don't get a lot of range going backwards. So instead of going straight to it, I'm gonna show you. This is him straight up. And that's him leaning back. So it's kind of like a whoa, but not much better. You get a little more range going forward though. No waist articulation, doesn't do any spinning or anything there. Can you can can? You sort of can can. Not too high. Gives you a full 90 degrees bending over there. Now this is an interesting hip joint. I've never seen this before. So you have his hip right here and this little prong extends into the leg and then it comes out. It's kind of dope. Banana split. That's a crazy split. Don't like these little gaps here though. So no thigh swivel. You do have a swivel at the knee joint. And nope. None at the foot. The foot does not swivel. Foot's not on a rocker either. It's just a straight back and forth hinge. Single jointed knee. Or I don't know if I can call it a knee because the knee's actually up here. Single jointed patella, is that what that's called? Doctors, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so you don't get a lot of range there. Can he? Yeah, he. Uh, nowhere near kicking his butt. Yeah, articulation is really poor here. He's not moonwalking at anybody's club. Those toes don't point very high. Let's swap out those hands. Come on, put up your dukes. I'll get you with my single jointed elbows. I'll get you. I swear I will. So the flame accessory goes right into his back. And you see the bottom part, we're going to the stand. And, and it has a movable hinge, so you can actually angle him. All right, let's take a moment to bask in the glory that is Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. Keith Lee. I gotta say, he looks much better than the promo shots. In the promo shots, he looked stiff. Not saying he isn't stiff, his articulation is not that great, but he doesn't look as bad as he did in the promo shots. The promo shots look like they just threw him on top of a table and took pictures of him. So, there are two accessories. This little flame piece here, and this fire, oh, I'm such an idiot. I was sitting there trying to get this on his fist. <laughs> I forgot that this was the other head. All right, forgive me, we're gonna do the other head in a second. <laughs> so here's the other faceless head, the one I'm calling the Hammond head, from the OG torch. That's what I'm going to use it as. I have to look for a hole because this extra fire piece here has a little peg on it, so it goes somewhere on him, but I haven't found it yet. 
I'll let you know when I find it. And by the way, this head is hell to get on. I literally hurt my, look at my finger. See those marks there? That's from pushing the head on and it's probably still not on the way on. The hole in the head is way too small on mine. Again, look at my finger. Look at the imprints from pushing the head off. So he does double as the human torch. That's why they include this head. I don't know why they don't say it on the package. So the Fantastic Four emblem in his chest comes out and that's where this flame piece goes. So if you actually want him to be the original human torch, you have this piece right here to put in. That is so sweet. I don't understand why they didn't put that in the package. How I figured it out was uh, I started editing the beginning of this video because it's going to be really long. And I noticed that on the inside of the box, the comic book covers were for the Human Torch from back in the days, not for Fantastic Four. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I came back down and started messing with it. So they're slick. I don't know why they don't advertise it. That would be a big selling point for a lot of people. And now we've got the Silver Centurion. Alright, 360 on the head. Tilt left. Tilt right. Look up. That up range isn't too good. Doesn't really look down too much either. Arms get it parallel with the shoulders. Single jointed elbows give you about 88 degrees, not quite 90. So I'm downing at 360 because these shoulder pieces, I'm sure if you pulled it out and twist it, you could. Not gonna scrape it up, but we get a bicep swivel and you have an elbow swivel. And then you have a wrist swivel. Not quite a repulsive blast for this hand. I know, I see the irony. Punch to the face. Kiss the ring. Kind of sort of lean with it. Not really a rock with it. So, he's got his torso rocker, but it's very limited. You can see he doesn't get a lot of movement out of it. He does have 360 at the waist though. Surprise, surprise. Abdominal crunch. No wheelie way back, but it's passable. Can you can can? No, he can't can. Not much of a bend over there. But you do get a heck of a banana split there. 360 at the thigh. About the knee. Oh, yeah, you get 360 at the knee. Nothing at the calf. Oh, you do get 360 at the foot. Look at that. So those knees barely bend. That's all you get. Like he's trying to creep into a closet or something. Good range point down on the toe, but not pointing up. So you get no kind of moonwalk action. And here's a scoped out head. This is Where's My Liquor, Tony Stark hit. Actually, technically this armor is from right after he became sober, so can't say that. You can pull out his chest piece and swap it out with the one that came in the package. So, so here is with the repulsive blast hand, a plain open hand, and his unit beam firing off. He also has this gripping hand here. And of course, the pulse bolts, my favorite. Say the best for last. And there he is on the flight stand. Warning, the flight stand. <laughs> the stick is way too long. It bends and it folds and it's hard to balance, but you can get it to work. All right, let's stop and take a moment and bask in his glory. Keith Lee. All 
All right, so here he is next to the Marvel Legends Silver Centurion that came out uh, early this year or last year. Kind of sad when you put them next to each other. The Marvel Legends has the articulation, but that's it. The Select has more accurate colors, more accessories, more accurate armor, just overall far superior, far, far superior. And now for the big guy. 360 on the head. Tilt right. Actually, tilt left. Tilt right. Looking down. Looking up. Arms go up parallel to the shoulders. I just bent his elbow and the paint came right off of the hinge. I mean, it just sliced it like a pear. That is no good. So single joint to elbow action, you get 90 degrees. As far as the arms come in, that's as far as it goes back. Get 360. 360 at the bicep, 360 at the elbow, and then 360 at the wrist. Believe it or not, that's Repulsor Blast. Punch to the face. Kiss the ring, so not a whole lot of range there with the wrist. Lean with it. Rock with it. Domino rocker. It's pretty smooth. Limbo. He gets no crunch forward though. Hmm. That's odd. You get a 360 on it. Can he can can? Yes he can can. Crazy banana split for a big guy. There's no thigh swivel. Oh yeah, there is, shoot, it's way up here. Almost missed it. It's a, it's a crack. Yeah, there we go. Woo. It's like a chicken leg. And you got 360 at the knee, 360 at the ankle. Single jointed knee, only get 90 degrees out of it. No moonwalk, but he is light on his feet. Here is Sans helmet. It's a pretty good head sculpt. It looks angry. Not sure if I mentioned this before, my Iron Man's feet are loosey goosey, so I'm gonna have to put some gum in there to get him to stick. So he gives me a little trouble standing. But overall, I like all three of them. They've got their shortcomings on articulation, uh, especially Titanium Man and Human Torch. And Titanium Man, I didn't like the paint stripping off him, but man, he is awesome. And the fact that you can get this OG Human Torch instead of Johnny Storm, that's awesome. And the height differential makes up for it, seven inch scale, but uh, the Android Human Torch is I think 6'3", and Johnny Storm is something like 5'9 or 5'10", so it really works out well. That Silver Centurion is a big improvement over the Marvel Legend, even though it doesn't scale, so you can't put it with your Legends, but it's nice to have on the shelf. All right, geeks, sorry this review was so long, but I want to knock all three of these out together. Let me know what you think. Make sure to give this video a like, hit that thumbs up button on your way out, subscribe, turn on notifications. Till next time, geek out.